join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. change our format significantly. This year we will exhaust three subjects, breast cancer in black women, voting, and the subjects for black men. Each of these ideas and subjects is essential for the black community. Our survival depends on the health of black women, our willingness to vote, no matter what, and the fortitude and determination of black males to develop. We might as well face it, the survival of any community depends on the mental and physical health of both the female and male. Children need both their father and mothers, and the community needs happy, substantial families to survive. No culture can survive without either. I want you to join me in our discussions. I want women to realize that the survival of their children is the only proof that they ever existed. Think about what I just said. Your children are the only proof that you ever existed on this earth. So when you are careless about your health and die before your time, the survival of your children is greatly reduced because they will be placed in foster care where they can be abused mentally and physically. I want men to join in learning about breast cancer and try to save the lives of their mothers, sisters, aunts, cousins, and grandmothers. I want men to begin to listen to subjects that can greatly improve their lives. I am going to play certain speeches regarding the need to vote. There will be speeches of Obama, Stacey Abrams, and others. I am also going to discuss Shirley Chisholm, Constant Baker Motley. She is the first African American woman to ever become a federal judge. All in all, I hope you will enjoy the new format and be greatly encouraged in your life. Also, thank you for listening and growing with us. My friend, a gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to oppose this rule and to support the previous question. In a democracy, the right to vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have. Many people marched and protested for the right to vote. Some gave a little blood and others lost their lives. Some of you have heard me say that the right to vote is precious, almost sacred. In my hearts of hearts, I believe that we should make it simple and convenient for all of our citizens to be part of the democratic process. It should not matter whether you're black or white, Latino, Asian American, or Native American. We should be able to participate in the democratic process. On March 7, 1965, I gave a little blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge for the right to vote. Before the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was passed, some people had to count the number of bubbles in a bar of soap, the number of jelly beans in a jar. And all across America today, when people go out to attempt to vote, they stand in long, immovable lines. That's not right, it's not fair, and it's not just. We can do better and we must do better. We have a moral obligation, a mission, and a mandate to empower all of the American people, not just a select few. We must do what is right, what is fair, and what is just. Today our democracy is under attack 
by forces within and forces abroad. We need to fix it and fix it now. For these reasons, I'm proud to sponsor H.R. 12, the Voter Empowerment Act, with my friends and my colleagues. It is a good bill, a necessary bill, and a patriotic bill to protect and to preserve our voting system. I urge each and every one of you to support the previous question, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Jim from Massachusetts. city in 1961, the year Barack Obama was born. I was one of the 13 original Freedom Riders. We were on a bus ride from Washington to New Orleans, trying to test a recent Supreme Court ruling that banned racial discrimination on buses crossing state lines. We tested the waiting room, restroom facility, but here in Charlotte, North Carolina, a young African American tried to get a shoe shine at the Greyhound bus station. He was arrested and taken to jail. On that same day, we traveled to Rock Hill, South Carolina, about 25 miles from here. When my seatmate, Albert Bigelow, and I tried to enter a white waiting room, we were met by an angry mob that beat us and left us lying in a pool of blood. Some police officers came up and asked us whether we wanted to press charges. We said no. We come in peace, love, and nonviolence. We said our struggle was not against individuals, but against unjust laws and customs. Our goal was a true freedom for every American. Since then, America has made a lot of progress. We are a different society than we were in 1961. And in 2008, we showed the world the true promise of America when we elected President Barack Obama. A few years ago, a man from Rock Hill, inspired by President Obama's election, decided to come forward. He came to my office in Washington and said, I am one of the people who beat you. I want to apologize. Will you forgive me? I said, I accept your apology. He started crying. He gave me a hug. I hugged him back, and we both started crying. This man and I don't want to go back. We don't want to go back. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, do you want to go back? Or do you want to keep America moving forward? My dear friends, your vote is precious, almost sacred. It is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have to create a more perfect union. Not too long ago, people stood in unmovable lines. They had to pass a so-called literacy test, pay a poll tax. On one occasion, a man was asked to count the number of bubbles in a bar of soap. 
On another occasion, one was asked to count the jelly beans on a jar all to keep them from casting their ballot. Today, it is unbelievable that there are Republican officials are trying to stop some people from voting. They are changing, they are changing the rules. Cutting polling hours and imposing a requirement intended to suppress the vote. The Republican leader in the Pennsylvania House even bragged that his state's new voter ID law is going to allow Governor Romney to win the state. That's not right, that's not fair, and that is not just. <laughs> and similar efforts have been made in Texas, Ohio, Florida, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, and South Carolina. I've seen this before. I lived this before. Too many people struggled, suffered, and died to make it possible for every American to exercise their right to vote. John Lewis's last words appeared in the New York Times today in an essay that he wrote shortly before his death, intending it to be published on the day of his funeral. Here is that essay read for us today by John Lewis's friend and admirer, Morgan Freeman. While my time here has now come to an end, I want you to know that in the last days and hours of my life, you inspired me. You filled me with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when you used your power to make a difference in our society. Millions of people motivated simply by human compassion laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and the world, you set aside race, class, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. That is why I had to visit Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington, though I was admitted to the hospital the following day. I just had to see and feel it for myself that after many years of silent witness, the truth is still marching on. Emmett Till was my George Floyd. He was my Rayshard Brooks, Sandra Bland, and Breonna Taylor. He was 14 when he was killed and I was only 15 years old at the time. I will never ever forget the moment when it became so clear that he could easily have been me. In those days, fear constrained us like an imaginary prison and troubling thoughts of potential brutality committed for no understandable reason were the bars. Though I was surrounded by two loving parents, plenty of brothers, sisters, and cousins, their love could not protect me from the unholy oppression waiting just outside that family circle. Unchecked, unrestrained violence and government-sanctioned terror had the power to turn a simple stroll to the store for some Skittles or an innocent morning jog down a lonesome country road into a nightmare. If we are to survive as one unified nation, we must discover what so readily takes root in our hearts that could rob Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina 
of her brightest and best. Shoot unwitting concert goers in Las Vegas and choke to death the hopes and dreams of a gifted violinist like Elijah McLean. Like so many young people today, I was searching for a way out, or some might say a way in. And then I heard the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on an old radio. He was talking about the philosophy and discipline of nonviolence. He said we are all complicit when we tolerate injustice. He said it is not enough to say it will get better by and by. He said each of us has a moral obligation to stand up, speak up, and speak out. When you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do its part to help build what we call the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. Ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting in what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. Voting and participating in the democratic process are key. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society. You must use it because it is not guaranteed. You can lose it. You must also study and learn the lessons of history because humanity has been involved in this soul-wrenching existential struggle for a very long time. People on every continent have stood in your shoes through decades and centuries before you. The truth does not change. And that is why the answers worked out long ago can help you find solutions to the challenges of our time. Continue to build union between movements stretching across the globe because we must put away our willingness to profit from the exploitation of others. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. When historians pick up their pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last, and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and war. So I say to you, walk with the wind, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of peace and the power of everlasting love be your guide. John Lewis gets tonight's last word through the voice of his friend, Morgan Freeman. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Hello. This is Minister Gloria Lee from the Women of Courage show. I want you to prepare to vote. That is correct. I want you to make up in your mind, come hell or high water, that you will vote in every election that is held in the state of Michigan, regardless of how long the voting lines are and regardless of the weather. Your vote is important. That is why you need to take some water with you and a small stool to sit on. Your vote will determine the property tax we pay, the car insurance that we pay, the housing that is available for seniors, the schools our children will attend. Your vote will determine the number of new job openings, the number of hospitals and hotels in our city. Your vote will determine the policies at our universities and the police force. Never assume that your vote does not count. Voting is the most essential activity that you will ever participate in your life. 
People have died so you can vote. Elections comes down to voter turnout, so stand in line and make your vote count. I would like for you now to listen to a short speech by John Lewis on voting. Listen to what he has to say and note the passion in his voice. The Democratic National Convention has gaveled into session on this day three, beginning about an hour ago. Let's go straight to the floor where veteran Georgia Congressman and civil rights pioneer John do Lewis is speaking. Or do you want to keep America moving forward? My dear friends, your vote is precious, almost sacred. It is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have to create a more perfect union. Not too long ago, people stood in unmovable lines. They had to pass a so-called literacy test, pay a poll tax. On one occasion, a man was asked to count the number of bubbles in a bar of soap. On another occasion, one was asked to count the jelly beans on a jar, all to keep them from casting their ballot. Today, it is unbelievable that there are Republican officials are trying to stop some people from voting. They are changing, they are changing the rules, cutting polling hours and imposing requirement intended to suppress the vote. The Republican leader in the Pennsylvania House even bragged that his state's new voter ID law is going to allow Governor Romney to win the state. That's not right, that's not fair, and that is not just. <laughs> and similar efforts have been made in Texas, Ohio, Florida, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, and South Carolina. I've seen this before. I lived this before. Too many people struggled, suffered, and died to make it possible for every American to exercise their right to vote. For the past two months, I have discussed breast cancer in black women. Recently occurred to me that I had not heard from males in the area. Not one man had written or called me for information on breast cancer, nor has any male volunteered to help our breast cancer campaign. This caused me to wonder why. I hope the answer is not that males think breast cancer is a woman's issue. It's not. It's a family issue. It's a marriage issue. It's a community issue. It is an issue that concerns us all. The loss of one member of our community is devastating. Everyone is affected by the death, either directly or indirectly. The death of a parent can lead to angry children and devastated husbands. The death of a parent can lead a child to criminal behavior. Breast cancer is serious business, not just because of the death, but because of the aftermath, the horror breast cancer leaves behind. This is why, as a community, this disease must be fought at all costs by all of us. You have mothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and granddaughters all at risk for breast cancer. 
Yes, women die of other diseases, but breast cancer is the most insidious disease of them all. I noticed I have not seen one man download the PDF file, Black Women and Breast Cancer, and send the file to any of his female relatives or friends for that matter. Why? You are concerned. So I would like for you to participate with me. Go to https colon slash slash nisv dot info and download the PDF file Black Women and Breast Cancer and send it to five of your friends. Also, please sit down and read the booklet. It's filled with information. One of the most important things about the disease is that we understand it. By understanding the disease, we can ask more informed questions of our doctors. Do you know how many people die or are injured each year because they take medication improperly? There is a reason why pharmacists insist on putting warning in our medication. This is why it's important that you learn to read. Medication errors are a problem with people who cannot read and or are afraid to ask their doctor questions because they don't want to appear stupid. When you go in to see your doctor, it's not your job to try to impress him or her. You want their talents to impress you. So if you don't understand something, say so and ask all the questions you need to feel comfortable taking your medicine or understanding your illness. The same with your pharmacist. Ask him or her questions until you feel comfortable taking your medication and you know how to take your medication properly. I received a medication in the mail. I did not know how to take it. I read the directions, but it was not clear to me how to take the medication properly. I was truly frustrated because I knew I was a competent reader. I drove down to the VA Medical Center and asked the pharmacist to show me how to take my medication. The pharmacist didn't say a word, but she came out, sat down, and demonstrated how I was to take my medication. And she discussed the actions the medication would have on my body. I left her knowing more than I did when I arrived. On another occasion, I received a phone call from a pharmacist, and she told me immediately to stop taking two of my medication because there was a contradiction. Both medications had been prescribed by doctors, but it was the pharmacist who noted that error. So don't feel stupid asking questions of your doctor or pharmacist. That is their job, to help you with the care of your body. This is why the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer is so important. It's filled with information. The information is presented in such a way as to make you aware of what you did not know or understand. This awareness should prompt you to ask questions of your physician. All cancers are not the same. This is why family history is so important. The booklet was also written to let black women know that their cancer can be more virulent and more progressive than others. The book was also written to inspire black women to become more involved in the research of their particular breast cancer. Who's doing the research? Where is the research being conducted? And how is this research being funded? And by whom? I believe we can have a significant breakthrough with cancer if black women become more aggressive in funding research. Join us to support our campaign by purchasing a book. See our advertisement. We have great gifts for men. Hi, I decided that at the end of every show for the next year, I would share excerpts from a book that I believe would enhance your life and make you a stronger thinker and problem solver. All characteristics that will help you win at life and raise stronger and healthy children. Many of you turn your nose up at reading or you snub the advice that you must read in life to succeed, or you compare the cost of a book to getting a new pair of shoes or getting your hair done or your nails done. The reason why you make these cost comparisons is because you do not truly value a book. A book is a magnificent instrument that can change the course of your life and the lives of your children. In later shows, I plan to discuss with you how a book changed certain, the lives of certain people. I understand that you do not earn a lot of money, and this money is valuable to you because of all the things you see advertised that you desire. 
and you do not want to spend a lot of money on a book. A new pair of shoes is more valuable to you than a book. If you truly cannot afford a book, then you need to go to the library and take your children with you for a day of reading. You must gird your loins and proceed at educating yourself. Some of you seem to think that having a conversation with your stupid girlfriend or your stupid boyfriend will help you more than reading a book. When actually having a conversation with your loudmouth girlfriend or loudmouth boyfriend is merely a cathartic allowing you to blow off steam and proclaim how life has been so unfair to you. What you do not realize is that the advice coming from your do-nothing girlfriend or your do-nothing boyfriend is advice coming from a fool. Your do-nothing girlfriend is a sexual opportunist looking for a man she can impress with her body. When her vagina fails her, what will your girlfriend do but go to work at McDonald's or Wendy at the age of 60 and continue to spread her ignorance at church? Her daughter will be on the street and her son in prison. She will never realize that her life is the result of the decision she made not to educate herself through reading. All her life, she felt that she had something better to do than reading. She had something better to do than reading with her children. She had something better to do than working with her children. And that was going to the bar, trying to entertain a man, or trying to find some man that would buy her a pair of shoes. A man spending money on her was more important than educating herself. In later shows, I'm going to spend a great deal of time giving you some examples of fools. These are people who think they are smart, willing to trade their body and integrity for a dollar bill. These people end up in the cemetery after lamenting each and every day of their lives about their unfilled dreams. Do not be upset by the use of the word fool. You tell me if a woman is not a fool to instruct her grandson to kill her husband for a $25,000 life insurance. Let that sink in for a moment. Instead of instructing her grandson to make something of his life, the grandmother instructs her grandson to become a murderer, to kill his grandfather. I have this anecdotal advice for you about reading. Listen to this short true story. A friend and I were talking. She said a woman she knew called her and sought to renew their friendship. During their conversation, the woman told my friend that President Trump had done so much for black people and that's why she voted for him in 2016 and she was going to vote for him again in the upcoming election. My friend asked her a question. She said, tell me some of the things that Trump has done for black people. The woman said a whole lot. My friend persisted and asked her to name one thing that Trump had done for black people. The woman could not. The woman kept using the phrase a whole lot of things. My friend said after a while she stopped talking. Finally the conversation was over and my friend hung up. My friend said as she hung up she made up her mind right then that she would never renew her friendship with this woman. Now ask yourself why. Why would she not renew her friendship with this woman? You can answer this question in two words. The woman was a poor thinker. She never investigated anything that was told to her. Whether you know it or not, a person who is a poor thinker who does not examine his or her thinking is a very dangerous person indeed. Think about it. Today we will be discussing the book, What You Must Do to Win. This is an excellent read, and after you finish reading it, you will enjoy it, but you must put some of the ideas that the author talks about into practice. Reading is not enough. You must put these ideas into practice. 
Before we begin today's broadcast, we want to suggest that you go to our YouTube channel, Touched by the Light Publishing, and listen to some of our earlier shows. We want you to listen to show 8. We want you to listen to show 34, which is Commit to Your Self-Esteem. We want you to listen to show 39 in the end jealousy and we want you to listen to show 42 the consequences of jealousy we believe when you review this information you will begin to understand the dynamics of your emotions you do not want to allow your emotions to carry you to a position where you begin to make decisions that will harm your children and put their lives in jeopardy their lives will be in jeopardy if you go to prison. As simple as that. The state will take custody of your children and they may put them in a situation where your children will never see your, their relatives again. You need to start seriously considering your behavior. You need to stop competing with women because their breast size is larger than your breast size or that their derriere is larger than your derriere. Why should you have an operation to enlarge your butt where you can die and leave your children here unprotected? Just how important are larger breasts and just how important is a larger butt compared to the lives of your children? You need to start really thinking. You keep bringing unrelated males into your home, insisting that your children call them daddy. This behavior is stupid and I'll tell you why. First of all, you have no idea how that man was raised. You do not know if his mother told him at, while in his listening to her talking to his sisters, his mother told his sisters never to bring relate, unrelated men into the home because they could rape their children. Now, if this man heard his mother tell his sisters not to do that, and he's watching you do it, what do you think he thinks of you? You seem to think, when you bring these unrelated men into the house, that they are not evaluating you. Yes, they are. And when they come up with the conclusion that you're stupid, and that you do foolish, silly things, they're going to start leaving. They're going to start looking around for another woman where they can go nest. Because that's all they're doing. All these men are doing are nesting. Why do you keep putting your children through this trauma when you know <clears throat> within a few months after this man gets in a better financial position, he's going to leave? Your children will grow up not respecting themselves. They will become victims of sexual predators and the worst of men. This is why when reading the book, What You Must Do to Win, that the author keeps repeating the phrase that you must begin to think and to seek the help of a psychologist or a psychiatrist. When you keep repeating negative behavior over and over and over again, then it is time to seek professional help. How many my baby daddies are you going to have? We are not conducting these broadcasts to make you feel bad or to embarrass you, but we're trying to make you aware of your negative behavior. We are trying to save the lives of children. We know we can't save the child if we can't save the mother because the mother is the primary caregiver. Listen to what I'm saying. We are trying to save the lives of children. But we cannot save the lives of children if we cannot influence the way their mothers think. Because the mother is the primary caregiver. You need to change. We do not care if you wake up in the morning in a hotel room with a man that you do not know. You still need to change. You can redeem your life. You must believe. You do not have to tranquilize yourself with alcohols or drugs. You just need to start respecting yourself and loving yourself. 
You can do what lots of other people have done with their lives when they were losing. They stopped the losing behavior and became another person. We believe once you realize why you keep repeating this self-defeating behavior, you can learn your way out of this servo loop and begin living a more fulfilling and satisfying life. Yes, you're going to have to change your set of friends. Yes, you're going to have to let go of the past. Also, at the end of this broadcast, we want you to listen closely to what we have to say about self-esteem. Now back to today's broadcast. We need to get one thing straight. Your children do not care what size your breasts are, and they do not care how big your buttocks is. What they care about is, are there lights on in the house? Is there food in the refrigerator? Do you have money for them to go skating or to buy an Xbox? And do you have money for them to buy lunch at school? And believe it or not, your children are going to evaluate you based on these things or the lack of these basic needs. They care absolutely nothing about your falling in love. Why? Because children are that way. They are self-interested and they are self-loving. Those are the basic characteristics of children. As they grow older and reach adulthood, they will change. But in the beginning, all of they are all that children are interested in is meeting their basic needs. Children are selfish. That's just the way they are. They believe they deserve all the attention in the family. Your children will care absolutely nothing about your falling in love with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. But they will have an opinion on how stupid your best girlfriend is. And yes, they will have an opinion about the men that you bring into the home. And as they grow older, they will begin to develop opinions about your behavior. This is where winning and losing comes in because you're going to be evaluated by your children. There is no way to escape this evaluation. You might as well accept that your children will develop their own mind and they will hate you if you force them to try to think as you think. They're going to notice that your friends, excuse me, that their friend's mother get up every morning and go to work and you do not. You wake in the morning lying in bed with that no good man smoking a joint of marijuana. Yes, your children are going to despise him and yes, your children are going to grow up and dislike you. There's no sense sitting there crying. It's going to happen because you've done nothing to keep it from happening. Yes, your child will love you but he or she may not especially like you nor respect you. Therefore, your conduct will be extremely important in the days ahead because your child will continue to grow and soon they will be adults making decisions for themselves. There was a young man that I knew that as soon as he graduated from high school, he left Michigan. He applied to and was accepted by a school in California. He wanted to be an attorney. He was accepted in colleges here in Michigan, but he wanted to leave the state. He did not want to have anything to do with his family. He rather pay the out-of-state tuition to live in California than to be around his family. He made arrangements with financial aid to live and study in California. He never came back to this state. He seldom correspond with his siblings or parents. He returned to this state when his mother died and he left the state the next day. He did not visit friends and family. All of his siblings are dead now. They died from overdoses or illnesses associated with drugs. He had eight siblings. Now do you see how your behavior affects your children?
You need to change. And you need to stop having affairs with every man that you see. You need to stop pulling your panties down. You need to stop dating married men. And you need to stop bringing unrelated males into your home. You need to get up and go get an education. You need to get a respectful job. Life is not all about you. It is about your children that you brought into this world. They desire a chance. And the only person that can give them this chance is you. You have three choices. You can sit on your couch and do nothing. You can participate sometime hardly doing anything. Or you can step into the future that you designed. The decision is yours. What are you waiting for? You either stand up for yourself with the chance of winning or failing, or grow old, mean, bitter, and hateful. Driving your children to run from home or move to another state because of your archaic ideas. Time is running out. What are you going to do? Hello, this is the Women of Courage show, and I am Gloria Lee, your host. For the most part, almost all of our broadcasts are dedicated to trying to get men and women to focus their attention to changing their behavior to live a better life. You must understand your change is essential to the well-being and survival of your children. We want children to avoid the profession of prostitution and living a life in prison. When you change, you will see the possibilities available to you. You do not have to continue to live a life that you hate and a life that you are truly ashamed of. Poverty does not have to define you. Let your strength and perseverance define you. You can listen to us at home, in your car, or at work on your lunch hour. It is essential that you get a daily dose of encouragement every day. Just a few minutes a day of listening to us can make learning effortless. You can even listen to us while you're preparing dinner or just as you are about to fall asleep. We want you to fit our broadcast into your day. This is why we put all of our broadcasts on the YouTube channel Touched by the Light Publishing. Our goal is to inspire you to greatness. So give Women of Courage a listen to throughout the week and please support us by purchasing a book today from our website, touchedbythelight.us. Thank you. Our lessons are viewer supported. If you enjoy our lessons and they have been a help to you, please send the Women of Courage show a donation. Any amount will help. A dollar will help. Spread our message. You can also go to our website, touchedbythelight.us, and purchase the book, You Are the Prophet of Your Life. We support ourselves through book sales. The book is also on sale at the radio station, WHPR, 160 Victor Street in Highland Park, Michigan, right off of Woolworth Avenue. If you do not have internet access, you can make a donation to us by mailing it to Post Office Box 7688 Bloomfield Hills, Michigan 48302. Your support will be greatly appreciated. This video was brought to you by the Women and Children's Restoration Ministries. Why not email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com and learn about the programs we have to assist women to fulfill themselves. We welcome women who wish to participate. Surely you have a few hours each month to help us with one of the many programs we are developing. Your expertise will be greatly welcome. We believe that one of our programs, Returning Citizens, The Wall Project, Black Women in Breast Cancer, and Teach Someone to Read, will interest you where you might volunteer once a month to help us. Our primary function is to assist women in changing their lives for the better. 
please email us today at murdervoices at gmail.com. We will appreciate your help. Thank you. The Women of Courage show is a different kind of company. We have a legacy of putting our values into action, placing people, positive impact, and inclusivity at the heart of everything we do. This is what makes us unique. We remain steadfast in our commitments to tirelessly raise awareness, drive progress, and ultimately help the advance and education of women. Breast cancer and violence against women is not a single story. These subjects have a diverse and complex history. Therefore, we ask you to help us put the booklet, Black Women and Breast Cancer in the Hands of a Million Women. Please go to the website, https colon slash slash nisv.info and download the booklet, Black Women and Breast Cancer. Then email a copy of this booklet to five of your friends, asking them to email the booklets to five of their friends and so on. The Women of Courage show wants to unite and inspire women to help each other. We want to help prevent violence against women and end the disease breast cancer. Will you help? Congressman John Lewis is a living legend and an icon of the civil rights movement. A central focus of Lewis's activism has been the fight for the right to vote, a right that until 1965, generations of African Americans had been denied. When John Lewis was a teenager, he read in a comic book about what Dr. King had been doing in Montgomery. And he went to his parents and he says, I want to be part of this. By 1963, John Lewis had helped organize demonstrations and sit-ins across the South. When he was elected chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee that same year, he became one of the big six leaders of the civil rights movement and helped plan the March on Washington. At age 23, Lewis was the youngest person to speak at the event. But his most defining moment came two years later when he turned his attention to voting rights and helped lead a dangerous civil rights march from Selma to Montgomery. John Lewis was on the front lines of the 50 mile march, starting in Selma to Montgomery, demonstrating the murder of Jimmy Lee Jackson a young African-American who was killed by a state trooper, but also the denial of African-Americans' uh, right to vote across the South. If they could get the nation to zero in on Selma, Alabama, a place that had a large black population and very few African-Americans uh, who were registered to vote, then perhaps there could be some action. As activists marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, state troopers tear gassed and beat them. On what came to be known as Bloody Sunday, Lewis himself was severely beaten, suffering a fractured skull. Eight days after Bloody Sunday, President Lyndon Baines Johnson introduced the Voting Rights Act in Congress, and he would sign it into law in August 1965. Today, we strike away the last major shackle of those fierce and ancient bonds. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 was written on the road from Selma to Montgomery. The government responded and reacted to the power of the people. John Lewis has helped secure the right to vote for millions of Americans. He's been on the front lines of the fight for civil rights for over 50 years. And the last time I checked, he was still fighting. Too many people struggled, suffered, and died to make it possible for every American to exercise their right to vote. And we have come too far together to ever turn back. We must stand up, speak up, and speak out. This video was brought to you by the Women and Children's Restoration Ministries. Why not email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com and learn about the programs we have to assist women. 
We welcome women who wish to participate. Surely you have a few hours each month to help us with one of our programs. We believe that one of our programs, Recruiting Citizens, The Wall Project, Black Women in Cancer, Teach Someone to Read will interest you, where you might volunteer once a month to help us. Our primary function is to assist women in changing their lives. Email us today. We would appreciate your help. Our lessons are viewer supported. If you enjoyed these lessons and they have been a help to you, please send in a donation to Women of Courage Show. Any amount of help, a dollar will help. Help us spread our message. You can also go to our website, https colon slash slash touchbythelight.us and purchase the books, the prayer jar, and you are the prophet of your life. We support ourselves through book sales. The book is also on sale at the radio station WHPR 160 Victor Street in Highland Park, Michigan, right off of Woodward Avenue. If you do not have internet access, donation can be mailed to P.O. Box 7688 Bloomfield Hills, Michigan 48302. Your support is greatly appreciated. The Women of Courage show wants to unite and inspire women to help each other. We want to help prevent violence against women and end the disease breast cancer. We enjoy your listening to the Women of Courage show at WHPR every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And we support your local hairstylist. Do not forget to go to touchedbythelight.us website and download a copy of the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer. This is very important information and we would appreciate it if you email a copy of this booklet to five other women. We are trying to reach a million people with this booklet. Help us reach our goal. Your emailing this booklet to another woman can help save a life. Too many black women are dying of breast cancer, leaving vulnerable children behind. We can stop this trend with your help. Thank you.